Hello, my wonderful and amiable listeners. Welcome to yet another interesting news. Igo Akiriba has said, even if Ashwa Jubala Metinubu, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, becomes the United Nations Secretary General, the law doesn't care. Majid Dahiru, a newspaper columnist, has advised President Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tunubu to follow the advice of former governor of Kaduna State, Nasir Ahmed Erufai, on how to address terrorism in the country. Dahiru highlighted that Erufai, who initially chose to negotiate with terrorists, later realized the futility of engaging them in dialogue. Erufai publicly admitted that efforts to remove the insurgents only resulted in the increased violence leading to the advocate for their complete elimination. Dairu urged President Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tunubu to take the advice seriously and issue a decisive command to wage a comprehensive war against terrorism in Nigeria. During an interview on the Africa Independence Television AIT News Network, Dairu stated that Governor Erufai's change of stance demonstrated his acknowledgement of the error in attempting to negotiate with terrorists. Dairu commended Erufai for recognizing the dialogue with terrorists was fruitless and they, uh, they needed to be eliminated entirely. He urged President Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tunubu to consider Erufai's advice and provide a clear directive to carry out a total war on terrorism in the country. As we all know that the Federal Republic of Nigeria has one of the highest terrorism threats level in the world. Despite a general decrease in terror-related terror deaths, the country recently recorded the ninth highest number of people who died in terrorist attack worldwide after Afghanistan. Several militant groups are active in Nigeria, leading to the attack of both civilian and military targets. Boko Haram is by far the deadliest, most, actively, most active in the north of the country, Certain deaths have been attributed to Fulani extremists, while further violent outcomes have been characterizing conflicts among other ethnic, farmer, and ethnic groups. Although activities of different groups that target civilians are definite, definitely terrorist in nature, the attempts of the government in Nigeria to use the label may have created some confusion, especially when political opponents, civil society, and opponents of government have also been branded terrorists. There have also been doubts as to whether groups agitating for purely parochial par interests of ethnic, religious, and social groups are terrorist groups because of how they have been classified by the United Nations and the United States government. The United Nations consolidates a list which lists individuals and entities linked into linked to the Aqida, Osama bin Laden, and the Taliban, owing to the fact that none of the groups in Nigeria are featured on this list although they were instances of linkage between groups in the northern Nigeria and the Taliban. Nigerian government has refrained itself from, from itself from branding these groups as terrorist groups. In order to draw attention to terrorism in Nigeria, it is important to conceptualize it within an African context. Although the AU needs not maintain a list of terrorist organizations in Africa, its Convention on the Prevention and the Combating Terrorism Article 1.3 defines terrorism as any act which is violation of the criminal laws of the state party and which endangers the life, physical integrity or freedom of or cause serious injury or death to any person, any number of group of persons or causes, or may cause damage to public or private property, natural resources, environmental or cultural heritage, and is calculated or intended to intimidate, put in fear, coerce or induce any government body, any government body, institution, the general public or, or segment thereof to do or abstain from doing any act or to adopt or ab abandon a particular standpoint or to act accordingly to certain pr principles or to disrupt any public service, the delivery of any essential service to the public, or to create a public emergency or create general insurrection in a state. The AU in Article 31, however, noted that the struggle waged by people in accordance with the principle of international law for li their liberation or self-determination, including armed struggle against colonialism, occupation, aggression, and domination by, ter by forces, Political, philosophical, ideological, racial, ethnic, religious, or other motives shall not be a justifiable defense against a terrorism act. 
Nigeria, like many other nations in Africa, is not the is not short supply of groups and associations agitating for one thing or the other. It it limits to the to groups agitating for political, philosophical, ideological, racial, ethnic, and religious interests of their peoples and groups. Historically, three waves of such groups are discernible in Nigeria. The first of such existed before, even before the colonial rule. They were the age grades guide association and special interest groups performing one function after another in the overall engineering of their respective policies. The second wave related to groups essentially based on kinship affinity with presence in every part of the country, including the northern region. Such groups were formed as people began moving from one area to the other in search of colonial jobs. As ethnic association, they were based on strongly loyalty and obligation to their kinship groups, towns or villages. The third wave comprises of groups such as the Odua People Congress OPC, Ariwa Youth Consultative Forum, Movements for the Actualization of the Sovereign State of Biafra, Anambra Vigilante Service, Abia, Abia State Vigilante Service, Imo State Vigilante Service, the Niger Delta Volunteer Force, the Ogoni Youth Ijo Youth, Bakasi Boys, Igbisu Boys, Onicha Traders Association, and Mambila Militia Groups. Several factors under, underlie the growth and development of groups in the third wave. Economic recession in the 1980s, falling commodity prices, open prices, privatization, and others. Military dictatorship, especially under General ba- Ibrahim Babangida and Abachan, also Abubakar, not only stifled opposition but also introduced favoritism in government appointments, promotion, and allocation of good developmental projects. Irrespective of claims of controlling crime and criminality, the activities of terrorists in the in the region is really high. Organizations such as the Movement for the Emancipation of Niger Delta, Masop, and many other groups in Niger Delta are famous for hostage taking, kidnapping, for ransom, pipeline vandalization, oil thefts, arson, and ambush. Till date, more than 500 oil workers, politicians, actors, children, and other important personalities have either been kidnapped or taken hostage. Initially, the groups and associations argued that kidnapping and hostage taking were introduced to force experts introduced in crude oil exploration in Niger Delta areas to pressure Nigerian government. The indigenous people of Biafra also is one of the, the groups with the highest allegedly terrorism acts such from the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That will be all for now. Please don't forget to click on the like and subscribe button and let us know your thoughts and your opinion via the comment section below and I'll see you on the next news. Bye for now.